pocket these new niggas out. I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas want to war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the porch, twelve killers want to war, thirteen. What is up, guys, and welcome to the video. Today we are going to do a Ben TK effect. This is one of the most requested videos I ever get asked to do. Not specifically this effect, but just do a Ben TK video. More Ben TK breakdowns. How did Ben TK do this effect? I get asked that all the time, and it's almost always Ben TK. So here we are. I actually just watched Ben TK's most recent Philippines vlog. I can't remember where. I'm such a bad Filipino. For those of you who did not know, I am a Filipino. Half. I'm also a white boy. But his last vlog in Bohol and Siar Giao, he did this effect where he just flew a drone towards a hill and then kind of zoomed into the hill and then made it seem like he was tunneling through it and then came out the other side. And he did it like one after the other and it was really dope. So I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to do that. And then I know you guys are gonna wanna see it once I figure it out. So here we are. Anyhow, I took this clip. This was shot in Thailand. I actually just got it off video blocks. It's just a basic drone clip where we're flying by these little tower things. In my end, it, I just made it so it kind of burrows through the one right in the middle there and I really like how it turned out I just want to plug real quick that I will be dropping the After Effects Masterclass course that I've been putting together Early bird signups are gonna open up within the next week plan on starting the course November 15th and running it through just right before Christmas So for those of you interested in expediting your After Effects VFX knowledge and learning directly from me This is like a class that I teach It's not some online course where I post a bunch of stuff and then you go through it yourself You will physically be talking to me and learning from me. If you're interested in that, please reach out via Instagram DM or email. I'm trying to keep this course to about 10 people, so make sure to get me your email as soon as possible so you will receive that offer. Anyhow, let's get right into the software. The first thing you need to do is go to google.com and search rock texture. Find one you like, preferably one that kind of matches what you got going on in your clip. I found this rock texture and I thought it kind of matches the texture and color of these buildings here. Anyhow, you take that rock texture, create a new composition with it. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Let's go to full quality. Actually, let's keep it at quarter so that this doesn't slow down a ton. And what we're going to do is make this a 3D object. Right click new, create a 3D camera and just use default settings and then right click new and create a light. Make sure it's a point light and I've set the intensity to about 50% and just press OK. And then we need to switch our view to two views horizontal so we can see what's going on in 3D space here. Here is our light. As you move it around, you can see it affects the image that we have because here is our rock texture. So let's bring this closer to the camera. This little dot out here is the camera and we're just going to leave that there. If you drag it in Z space, you can see it moves towards or away from the image that we have right here on the screen. And you can see what's going on on the right side in the active camera. But we're gonna drag it so that you can just barely see the full rock for now. I'm actually gonna drag this light all the way back so that it's right in front of the camera. That will keep your rock texture lit up the entire time we're working with it. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is select your rock texture and create a mask. This is going to be our hole that we fly through. So just create a little hole within your rock. You can make this look however you want. Once you have that done, press M and switch your mask to a subtract mask. And there is your hole. Now you want to add a curves effect to this rock texture so that we can adjust the colors a bit. This way, not every rock texture we do is gonna look the exact same because we're gonna do a bunch of duplications of this. So just shift this to make it look however you want. You can add more contrast you can make it brighter, you can make it darker, whatever you want. We just don't want every rock layer to look the exact same. So now select your rock texture, control D to duplicate, press P, and then we're gonna drag it back in Z space, closer to the camera. And then we're gonna rotate it a bit so that it looks a little different. We're not getting the same exact angle of the rock. And then maybe adjust the mask a teeny bit so that not every layer of this tunnel is going to look the exact same. And then again, adjust your curves so that it doesn't look the exact same as the next layer. You can do this really quick because we're gonna have to do this about 30, 40 times, maybe even more, depending on how long you want your tunnel to be. Then repeat the process. Select your last rock texture, control D, press P, and then bring it back on the Z axis. And then do some Z rotation so that we're getting a different angle. And then adjust 
your mask again just so it doesn't look the exact same and then repeat with the curve so that the colors look a little different we're just adding variation within the tunnel because what you'll soon see is that if we bring the camera in through the rock we're kind of flying through those layers and once we have enough layers it'll create that tunnel effect but anyways drag your camera back out and let's continue to create these rock layers Pro tip, if you have a bunch of these already created, take small segments of your rock textures, select them all, duplicate them, and then drag them up to the top, and press P and drag them out so you can kind of extend your tunnel that way without having to do everything manually. This is just a little shortcut. You can do every single rock texture manually if you would like, but I'm just gonna do this to speed up the process. Now we have about 30 layers of rock texture. If you move your camera in the z-axis, you can see we kind of fly through those layers. We're gonna want to parent this light to the camera so we don't fly past the light and then we won't see anything. So parent your point light to your camera so that it moves with your camera in 3D space. Then go to the beginning of your clip, select your camera, open up the drop down, and create a keyframe at the beginning for position and point of interest. Now we're going to drag the position all the way back until we're starting to see those black edges. This is the beginning of our tunnel. Then we move forward a couple seconds and then drag the Z position through all the way to the other side of the tunnel so that we no longer see the tunnel itself. And if you go back on your timeline, you can see that this creates a flying through the tunnel type of effect. And before somebody comments saying that this looks like a butthole, this is a family friendly YouTube channel, guys. Don't be a shithead. I'm actually going to shorten this timeline and trim my comp to work area so that all we have is this tunnel effect. Here's another thing you're gonna wanna add if you want to really get that Ben TK vibe. Alt, click this stopwatch for point of interest, type wiggle, three, and then 50. This will give the camera that wiggle effect Ben TK always has. And the tunnel is, it's moving kind of slow through the tunnel, so I actually want to drag this position keyframe at the end in to be a lot faster. So now the effect is only one second long. Let's see how that looks. That looks a lot cooler to me. Again, I'm going to trim my comp to that work area, so it's just flying through that tunnel. I'm actually gonna select composition settings here and rename this effect, 3D rock tunnel effect for tutorial. After that, go back to your main clip, cut it where you think you wanna zoom into whatever it is you're zooming into. So I'm gonna cut it here because I want it to zoom into this spot right here. And then at the end, we're gonna fly out here. So I'm gonna cut the clip again. Now, drag this 3D rock tunnel effect here. I'm actually going to delete this middle segment and just have it be the clip where we're flying into the tunnel, the tunnel, and then the clip where we fly out. Now, I want this first clip to be a little faster to kind of match the motion of the tunnel here. So let's actually time stretch this and make it shorter. Let's say 40, see how that looks. If that looks a little smoother, speed wise. Yeah, that does look a little smoother there. And then at the end here, let's, let's just match that and do a time stretch to 40. Let's scale this tunnel effect Boom, that looks a little smoother than it did. But now we need to have this so that we fly into this tunnel. And the way you fake that is with some motion keyframing and some motion blur. So let's add the motion keyframing first. Let's go to the beginning of our main clip. Press S, create a keyframe for your scale. Press P, create a keyframe for your position. Actually, let's separate our position dimensions so that we have X and Y positions. Go to the end of that first clip and then zoom in pretty far because this is supposed to be an effect where we're kind of like going in between the molecules of this tower. So adjust it to where you want it to zoom into. I'm gonna set it there. So now we have this and that looks like shit. So select your keyframes and we're gonna have to go into graph editor and make it zoom in fast at the end. So again we want a bigger slope here and then less of a slope at the beginning. So we'll drag these out until they meet so that it's really slow doing this transition at the beginning and then speeds up really fast 
at the end. If that's confusing for you, you might want to check out my advanced motion keyframing and advanced speed ramping tutorials because I went over graph editor extensively in those and it will kind of explain the whole process of doing this. So next you want to select your Y position, go into graph editor, pull this out at the beginning and then at the end we want it to zip in. So pull this down here until those bars meet and we'll go into scale, do the same thing, slower at the beginning and then have them meet at the end here. There we go. So let's see how that looks. And that looks pretty okay. I want the exposition to be more towards the center here. So adjust that and go into graph editor, fix it so the bars are touching at the end there again. Y position, same thing. And let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good to me. So now we zip into the rocks and then through the tunnel and then out the other side. Next up, we need to create an adjustment layer for the motion blur. Add a CC radial blur effect to that layer. And we're gonna shorten this so that it starts right about here. Bring quality up to 100, switch to fading zoom, and then create your first keyframe with zero. Zero motion blur here at the beginning. I'm gonna have it start right about here and go up. Ooh, we do not want that there. And then again, I'm gonna have to go in and adjust these handlebars so they're meeting at the end just to keep the motion consistent between the different parameters. There we go. Back to the radial blur. We start at zero, go up to let's say about a hundred. You want it to be pretty blurry because it's gonna sell the fact that we're just zipping into this hole. As soon as you're in the tunnel, swap whatever value it was just at to negative. From negative 126, let's go down to negative so that there's some motion blur throughout the entire tunnel transition because we're gonna be zipping through this tunnel. Then create another one here at the end for exiting the tunnel and then bring it down to zero. Notice that we have these black edges now. We're gonna need to add a motion tile effect to this radial blur segment. Make sure it's above the radial blur. Make your output width and height 200. That way we don't get those black edges. So let's see how that looks now. Starting to get there. Now we just need to smooth out the radial blur amounts with graph editor. So select your first keyframe, go into graph editor, add one of these, drag it out. Maybe add an ease in at the end there so it zips in there. And then go to the next one, add an ease out, bring it up here so it zips down. Maybe add an easy ease in there and then it's going to remain constant for a bit and then add an easy ease out and then an easy ease in at the end, and now everything should be a lot smoother there, motion blur wise. And why are we getting that black edge? We do not want that. That is happening because we have the negative 25, so let's actually switch that to positive 25. That way we don't get that weird effect. And there we go. I actually want to add a little more motion blur, smooth that out a bit. Let's bring this. Motion blur up as well. So now we have the first shot, the zoom into the tunnel. Now we just need to drag this last clip back a bit so we can see through the tunnel. Trim the comp to work area. So now we have that. Almost getting there, we got some more touching up to do. I'm going to add some motion keyframing to this clip underneath the tunnel so that it kind of matches the motion of the tunnel. So let's drag it over here. Keep that centered a bit more. But make sure at the end you're centered where it's supposed to be so that you don't get black edges. Now that motion's matched pretty well. And let's smooth that out a bit with some easy ease ins and such. Select them all, control click, and that'll smooth them out a bit. The end there, that was a bit rough. So let's actually bring this so that there's not so much motion there. You just gotta play around with it till it looks smooth. I think it'll look a little smoother if I make the beginning of this tunnel clip a little faster. So right click 
your tunnel effect, select time, enable time remapping, and let's actually make the beginning a tad bit faster than the rest of it. So let's drag that in. That way it kind of zips in with the first clip. And let's ease it in after that. Boom, that looks a lot smoother. And then we're gonna have to adjust these keyframes down here because I dragged everything out. Boom, there we go. There's a few more things we can do to smooth this out. And firstly, I would go into your rock tunnel effect comp and let's make it so that the light is brighter as we're entering the tunnel and then it gets darker towards the middle. So select your point light, go to light options and select intensity, click that stopwatch and go down from 50 to let's say about 25% towards the middle so it's like we're actually in a little tunnel where it's dark and then go near the end to wherever you want it to start brightening back up and then keyframe it back up to 50 percent that way it starts out bright and then it gets dark and then gets bright again let's see how that looks in our main comp let's actually smooth that out a bit more there we go. Now it looks brighter as you enter the tunnel. It gets darker towards the middle and then it gets brighter as you approach the end of it. And here's a little tip I use on a lot of my effects is add an adjustment layer over everything and put a LUT on top of your entire clip. Here we're just going to select a random LUT. Let's just add this fire LUT here. If you add a LUT over everything, it'll help blend that tunnel with the rest of the shot. And then another thing I would really suggest is adding a very intense whoosh at the beginning when you zoom into the tunnel. And again, you can find those on YouTube. You can find those with sound libraries. I actually use Storyblocks. Definitely add a whoosh for the beginning and a whoosh on the way out. And hopefully you get something that comes out like this. The rest is just your creativity, how you would like to implement this. I would definitely suggest adding some heavy sound design to get a whoosh into the tunnel and then maybe some like rubble sound in the middle there for when you're going through the tunnel and then a whoosh out of the tunnel because guys, sound design is really what brings these VFX to life. Anyhow, that's it for the video guys. I hope that was helpful. If you guys wanna see more Ben TK effects, please comment which specific ones you wanna see down below. And if this video helped you create something, make sure to give it a thumbs up and please send me like the things you create with my tutorials. I love seeing them. Just shoot me an Instagram DM and I'll typically repost it and share what you guys create. So feel free to send me anything you guys make using my tutorials. And again, if you guys are interested in the After Effects Masterclass and learning directly from me, that's coming out within the next couple weeks, just reach out via Instagram DM or email and let me know if you're interested in that and I will send you the information I have regarding the course. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We just reached 6,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can get to 10. See you guys in the next video. On my side. Peace. They gon' ride, they gon' ride. Nigga, this a homicide. Oh my God, oh my God. I said I was gon' retire. Bitch, I lied, bitch, I lied. I ain't got no fucking job. That's my 